Good evening and welcome to Evening Prayer for Tuesday, October the 13th. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Joyous light of glory of the immortal Father, heavenly, holy, blessed Jesus Christ, we have come to the setting of the sun, and we look to the evening light. We sing to God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy of being praised with pure voices forever. O Son of God, O giver of life, the universe proclaims your glory. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. Praise to you, O Christ. O come, let us worship him. Lord Jesus, stay with us, for the evening is at hand and the day is past. Be our constant companion on the way. Kindle our hearts and awaken hope among us, that we may recognize you as you are revealed in the scriptures and in the breaking of the bread. Grant this for your name's sake. Amen. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart, in the company of the upright, in the congregation. Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them. Full of splendor and majesty is his work, and his righteousness endures forever. He has caused his wondrous works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He provides food for those who fear him. He remembers his covenant forever. He has shown his people the power of his works in giving them the inheritance of the nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever to be performed with faithfulness and uprightness. He has sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who practice it have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. Our New Testament reading today is from Matthew chapter 22. Then a demon-oppressed man who was blind and mute was brought to him, and he healed him, so that the man spoke and saw. And all the people were amazed and said, Can this be the son of David? But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, It is only by Beelzebul, the prince of demons, that this man casts out demons. Knowing their thoughts, he said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself is laid waste, and no city or house divided against itself will stand. And if Satan casts out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then will his kingdom stand? And if I cast out demons by Beelzebul, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore they will be your judges. But if it is by the Spirit of God that I cast out demons, then the kingdom of God is come upon you. Or how can someone enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man? Then indeed he may plunder his house. Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. Therefore I tell you, every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven people but the blasphemy against the Spirit will not be forgiven. And whoever speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven, but whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven, either in this age or in the age to come. Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or make the tree bad and its fruit bad, for the tree is known by its fruit. You brood of vipers, how can you speak good when you are evil? For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks. The good person out of his good treasure brings forth good, and the evil person out of his evil treasure brings forth evil. I tell you, on the day of judgment, people will give account for every careless word they speak. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. Our Book of Concord reading tonight is, I think, the third to last installment on Article 12 of Repentance from the Apology of the Augsburg Confession. We're beginning in paragraph 63. Seems right. Is that where we left off? That's right. I think we skipped a day. Um, no. no, I think that's right. Sorry. Some of the beginning spots where we picked to divide this up kind of sound alike, so sometimes it sounds like we're repeating ourselves. And sometimes it actually does repeat itself, so it can be a little weird. 
Okay, beginning in paragraph 63. Second, we think that the adversaries recognize then the forgiveness of sins is either a part of repentance or its end, the terminus ad quem. Therefore, whatever receives the forgiveness of sins is correctly added to the parts of repentance. However, it is very certain that even though all the gates of hell contradict us, the forgiveness of sins cannot be received except by faith alone. This faith believes that sins are pardoned for Christ's sake, according to Romans 3.25 whom God put forward as a propitiation by his blood to be received by faith. Likewise, through him we have also obtained access by faith into this grace, Romans 5.2. For a terrified conscience cannot set our works or our love against God's wrath. It is eventually quieted when it takes hold of Christ as mediator and believes the promises given for his sake. For those who imagine that hearts become quieted without faith in Christ do not understand what the forgiveness of sins is, or how it came to us. So 1 Peter 2.6 cites from Isaiah 49.23 and 28.16, whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. It is necessary, therefore, that hypocrites be puzzled. They are confident that they received the forgiveness of sins because of their own works and not because of Christ. Peter also says, to him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins, Acts 10.43. What he says, through his name, could not be expressed more clearly. He adds, everyone who believes in him. So we receive the forgiveness of sins only through Christ's name, that is, for Christ's sake, and not for the sake of any merits and works of our own. This happens when we believe that our sins are forgiven for Christ's sake. Our adversaries cry out that they are the church, that they are following the general agreement of the church. But Peter also cites here in our issue the consensus, consensus of the church. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins. Acts 10.43 The general agreement of the prophets is certainly to be judged as the general agreement of the church universal. We admit neither to the pope nor to the church the power to make decrees against this general agreement of the prophets. But the bull of Leo openly condemns this article. Repentance and the adversaries condemn it in the confutation. It is clear what sort of a church we must judge these men to be. By their decrees, they not only condemn the doctrine that we obtain the forgiveness of sins through faith, not on account of our works, but because of Christ, but they also give the command to abolish it by force and the sword, and by every kind of cruelty, to put to death good people who believe this way. They have famous authors, Scotus, Gabriel Beale, and the like, and passages of the fathers that are quoted in a butchered form in the decrees. Certainly, if the quotations are to be counted, they win, for there is a very great crowd of most silly writers on the sentences. And though they had worked together, they defend these fables about the merit of attrition and of works and other things that we have mentioned previously. But let no one be moved by the multitude of citations. There is no great weight in the testimonies of the later writers. They did not create their own writings, but only by compiling from the writers before them, transferred these opinions from some books into others. They have exercised no judgment. Just like petty judges, they have silently approved the errors of their superiors, which they have not understood. Therefore, let us not hesitate to use the saying of Peter, which summarizes the prophets and opposes ever so many legions of the commentators on the sentences. The Holy Spirit's testimony is added to the statement of Peter, for the text speaks in this way, while Peter was still saying these things, the Holy Spirit fell on all who heard the word, Acts 10.44. And just again, as an aside, these sentences that the confessors are uh, talking about is this book called uh, The Sentences by Peter Lombard, which uh, students of theology often uh, studied these, commented about them, argued about what they meant, and actually used that for their full basis of their theological training uh, instead of actually, you know, reading what the Bible says. Uh, so it's no great mystery that they got led very, very astray by relying on uh, what men say about something else that another man wrote instead of what God uh, breathed out for us in Scripture. Therefore, let godly consciences know that God's command is this. They are to believe that they are freely forgiven for Christ's sake and not for the sake of our works. Let them sustain themselves against despair and against the terrors of sin and of death by this command of God. Let them know that this belief has existed among saints from the beginning of the world. For Peter clearly cites the general agreement of the prophets and the writings of the apostles confirm that they believe the same thing. 
nor are the testimonies of the fathers lacking. For Bernard says the same things in words that are in no way hidden. It is necessary, first of all, to believe that you cannot have forgiveness of sins except by the indulgence of God. But add yet that you believe also this, namely that through him sins are forgiven to you. This is the testimony that the Holy Spirit asserts in your heart, saying, Your sins are forgiven you. For so the Apostle concludes that a person is justified freely through faith. And we'll pick up from that thought tomorrow evening. Now we join in the Apostles' Creed in the Lord's Prayer. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, we praise your fathomless mercy with which you take pity on sinful men. All the prophets and apostles preach this to us in your holy word. Let our hope not be put to shame when we pray to you for all who suffer at this time. For behold, the evil foe has become mighty, and the great ones of this world rule often with unrighteousness. O God, who in former times caused your saints to overcome injustice, strengthen also today all who stand in need of your help. Grant that all prisoners of war held as slaves and sacrifices of earthly wrath, may return to their home. Stand by all refugees and homeless people and be their justice. Be a father to the widows and orphans with your strong protection. Go through bars and fences to those who are imprisoned for the sake of your name. Strengthen them for a good witness, and let them not waver in the confession of your name. Teach us through their example and the example of so many holy martyrs to be ever watchful of the confession of your son's name. Let us not be put to shame when the evil foe lays his hand on us. But if it is your will that we be persecuted for confessing Jesus as our Lord and only Savior, then support us in your grace that we may withstand all trials and grant us peaceful rest. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong and nothing is holy, multiply your mercy on us that, with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal that we may not lose the things eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good night.